Strange things that happened in Judge Rutter's courtroom yesterday. So the Senzumiwa trial will not be sitting today, okay, and Monday. They'll be back on Tuesday because the Vodacom expert, Pinky, is not feeling well. Her cough persists, and so they had to adjourn again. They had to adjourn early again so because she just couldn't continue through because of her cough. So to Pinky, get well soon. We need you right back in that witness dock, in that witness stand. We need you sworn in, okay, or continue to be under oath and continue to tell us what is going on. First on the agenda is we'll start at the end and come back forward. First thing that stood out in yesterday's session is Baloyi, okay, the national prosecutor representing the state in Senzo Meiyu, a trial, could not tell Judge Rata how many more witnesses are left. Like, you would think that's a very, very basic question. I think it's a very fair question. I mean, from Judge Rata, that's that's an easy question. Baloy was supposed... And I, li- I remember sitting up to hear, like, okay, how many more people to go? Because remember, once the state wraps up its its uh, witnesses, then we now go into the defense's witnesses. So this thing is nowhere near done. Did Valoi answer the question? I feel like even inserting cricket sound here. Did Valoi answer the question? You know what? Let me insert the clip. Let me know if you heard the answer to how many witnesses are left. Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, okay. So, Mr. Baloyi, how many other witnesses are you going to call? Roughly. You don't know. Well, my lord, as we intimated the other day that we are at the beginning of the end of the state case, we thought that maybe by the close of the term, which is something around the 22nd of June, if I'm not mistaken, it would be close to the end of the state case. But because of these delays, um, uh, I think early in the next term, we should be able to, to close the state case. Just, there are fewer witnesses left. Yeah, because we are running the risk of me dying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would be nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, this trial has been dragging and dragging and dragging and dragging. I once did a trial for five years, but at least it had breaks in between. <coughs> now, this one, it's like the Orient Express. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. OK, so you, you are, you're getting some medication at least. As you can hear, one thing about Valoi, he will never answer a question, okay? He went around and around. Like, I I listened so attentively because I'm so interested in knowing how much more do we have to endure this. So, this is what he said. Judge Rata said to him, how many other witnesses are you going to call? No answer. So, Judge Rata says, roughly... No answer. Then Judge Rata says, you don't know? No answer. But then now it's three times, right, that he's been asked a question three times. So now he's like, okay, I got, I got to say something. Let me see what I can say. And then he says, in true value, that, I mean, this is the case where I've learned the most new English words. He says, as we intimated the other day. <laughs> what? As we intimated the other day that we are at the beginning of the end of the state case. Do you want me to say that again? We're at the beginning of the end of the state case. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so let's break that down. So if we're at the beginning of the end, give us a number. Is it 10 more people to come? Is it 12? Is it 20? What is it exactly? And you know what it made me think of? It made me think of he didn't want to say a number because you guys are going to sit there and count and say, no, 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 no. We've exceeded witnesses at some point. He said there were 10 more people. Why are we at 12 and still counting? Why? Because every time the defense brings up something in the cross-examination, Baloyi gets a witness. Baloyi gets a witness. And you know, this is when Gomez Zulu says, what? This is when Gomez Zulu says, what? The state is cooking, okay? They're making things up as we go. Accused number one was not there. They're busy now. Uh, that's why one would be tempted to say they are cooking. They are manufacturing day in, day out. So that they can, it can fit what the state wants to do. 
because I can see, I can tell this court now, they don't have a case. Valoy is flying the plane, okay? Valoy is building the plane while flying it. And that's pretty risky. That's pretty risky. So we don't have how when this is ending. Although he says, yeah, maybe in, in the next term, it would be, yeah, we're about to wrap it up. Wow. Such a shock. Such a shock. I really would have loved that answer. Let me know if I missed it or if I'm getting ahead of myself. If you heard how many witnesses are left, let me know in the comment section down below now the next thing that was strange in judge retta's courthouse is when the whole judge said because you are running the risk of me dying oh sir wh what are you saying because we we cannot afford to start over mm -mm. i need a judge retta healthy okay daily until this gets to the end because Imagine if that was to happen. I'm definitely knocking on hood for that one. No, 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 no. We need you healthy, sir. We need you healthy. We need Pinky recovered. We we are too invested to start over. Oh my goodness. So another strange thing that happened in Judge Rutter's courthouse on Thursday, yesterday at the time of you watching this video, Gomezulu was late to court. <laughs> You know, every time there's Gomez Zulu and something that involves Judge Rata and Gomez Zulu absence, tidies, talking to each other, I, I hold my breath. I literally do. Because the next episode these two will have, it will literally be Puma Panja Sidwe. It will be all better off. It will be... And I, ooh. Because Judge Rata is ready, okay? Judge Rata is looking for Ngome Zulu. But you know what? I commend him for not reacting to the fact that Judge, to the fact that Ngome Zulu was late. Why is he late, he says. Anyway, let me let you listen to it. Here it is. Are you okay today? Much better, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay, yes, Mr. Swande. We are ready to proceed at this stage. However, Mr. Ngome Zulu has indicated that he is running late. Where is it? I hear that they're running late. Where is he running late? In Devon? <laughs> From his house, I believe so. However, he indicated that we can proceed in his absence, but I'm not sure if that is procedural. It's not. Because this client will come and make an appeal and say, this judge continued with the case in the absence of my counsel. So uh, let's break down a little bit. I don't want to be petty. I wanted to slow down the video and put Judge Rutter's reaction to the sentence by Svanda saying, Ngome Zulu is running late. Like you can literally see him begin to malfunction and then he corrects himself to, not today, I'm not doing this anymore. I just want to get through this trial. I don't want any more Ngome Zulu drama. But, and I commend him. I truly do. I truly do commend him because we are, we are tired. We are tired. I will admit it. When he does that, he gives me the most content and I can react to it. But in true honesty, we are looking for justice for Senzo Meiwa. That is honestly what we need. So make sure you type in the comment section down below, justice for Senzo Meiwa. Drop a soccer ball as well because Pinky Girl is taking us on a road trip here. She's taking us on a road trip because now we're trying to visualize where's that tower. Oh, do I know the Spritz Food Tower? Where's that? But that tower's not there. You know what I mean? Like, we're on this road trip with Pinky Girl. But good job, Retta, for keeping it simple, keeping it copacetic, keeping the court decorum in order. Ngome Zulu then shows up and guess what happens? Guess what happens? You already know I'm going to let you watch it. But just to let you know, Ngome Zulu walks in. He has a mask on. He's carrying a chair. Why is he carrying a chair? Anyway, I digress. So Ngome Zulu walks in and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm late. I was stuck in traffic. Judge Rata says, nothing. He says, I'm going to mind my business. Let's get started. And he turns to the witness. Okay, swear in the witness. <laughs> One day these two will have to talk it out. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, I see Mr. Mugomendo is here. Okay, are we all together? 
Okay. Now, here's the last thing that I found strange in Judge Rutter's courthouse. And you know what? I've decided to use the word I because sometimes in the comment section, oh my God, you guys have got gloves on and are ready to take me on. Relax. It is Friday. Okay. This is what I noticed. And if you notice anything else, be sure to leave, to leave it down in the comment section down below. Okay. This is what I noticed. I noticed that Judge I noticed that Judge Rutter caught some feelings because he was not invited. He was not invited by the BLA. What is BLA, BLA you wanted? The Black Lawyers Association of South Africa. Why wouldn't they invite Judge Rutter? Well, let me take you down um, history. A few weeks ago, um, Judge Rutter, of course, it was a battle between Judge Rutter and Gomezulu. And Judge Rutter said, is this how black lawyers behave? So he said, is this how black lawyers um, behave? And let me tell you something. Uh, the Black Lawyers Association said, hold the line, hold the line. Uh-uh. We need to understand what you mean by that. And, you know, they did a, they issued out a statement or they wrote some articles or some articles were put in the media. And Judge Rutter said, well, I can't talk to you. Okay. I have an active case as a Black Lawyers Association. You should know that. You should know better. I mean, an active court case. We're not talking to each other. And now there is a party or is it a gala or is it a dinner held by the Black Lawyers Association? And it's for veterans of the Black Lawyers lawyers association but you see what happens when you spend all your time telling people about your 50 years experience and during that outburst when he was addressing the black lawyers association or should i say responding to the black lawyers association of summoning him he he told us that well you know what i'm a founding member of the black lawyers association okay he, he gave us the rundown the story and then now the black, the very same Black Lawyers Association that he founded, that he helped, he was one of the founding members, whew, didn't invite him, didn't invite him to this gala, which is truly, truly, why? <laughs> so they didn't invite him. Um, he found out about it. Him and another man, another judge are the only ones who are still alive from that founding association. And I went online, you know what, I was like, you know what, let's check out, let's check out why they didn't invite him. I mean, there's got to be a reason. They do write the founding members. I don't, I didn't see Judge Rutter's name. And the people that founded um, the Black Lawyers Association of 1977, unless I'm on the wrong website, let me know in the comment section down below what you think about Judge Rutter's outburst. But if you haven't seen it, here it is for you. Who's a member of the BLA? Mr. Minister, you're not. The BLA? Uh, the BLA? Yes. I think Mr. Ramos is Are you a member, sir? Yes. This is just by the way. I'm told you guys are having a, a function in White River. I've received communication, but I didn't read it. Yeah, I was told by DJP Mujapiru with Mwepe. He just wanted to know if I was invited. He said, no, I'm not. And yet I formed the PLA 1977 <coughs> in, in October. The only living members of the PLA now is myself, Mushidi, Mwepe. The other guys have gone on to some other worlds. <coughs> I, I thought that the headshot was buried. The, the issue, what? The headshot is buried. That issue. No, no. But they're saying they're having a, 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 member, a, a dinner party for their veterans. So if the veteran is not there... If I'm not there, how yes. can you have it? Yes. Because basically, this guy was surprised, Mujapelu. I was asking whether I'm invited. And he joined the BLA, <laughs> I think, 1982 or three, somewhere there. I see, Mr. Baloy, you're surprised. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that the veteran is not... Uh, yeah, 47 invited. years ago. I drew up the constitution of the, the BLA. At that time, I was the Secretary General of uh, Azapo. And I just took the Constitution of Azapo, which they inherited from the Black People's Convention, of which I was also a founding member in 1969. And I just changed the abbreviations here and there. 
And then we had the most senior attorney then, it was Godfrey Piche, who had served these articles with Mandela and Tamu. And he called me and said, hey, this is not a political body. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be a professional association. Well, my lord, the, the court will really be so worried about the fact that the real veteran is not being invited. No. The court will also remember that we've got young veterans these days. Is Many years old have been called veterans. Never. <laughs> yeah. So really, the court should really be so worried that the real veteran is actually not being is that invited. So? Veterans these days, 15 year olds are now veterans. Uh, that's, uh, that's why so many things are going wrong in this country. That is what is happening these days. Uh, yeah, I hear you, I hear you. I hear you. Yes. Because when we started practicing, <coughs> we couldn't sit like this. There was a black section. Yes. You had to sit on the other side. And you couldn't even use that door. One door led to the white side. The black door led to the black side. And black attorneys <coughs> used never to sit like you. Like this. They used to sit with the first row of the public. And I remember that case is reported. Teacher, 1967, just before Mandela was sentenced, yeah, 65, I think. He sat on the white section and he was charged by contempt of court. Then, contempt of court, a judge could charge you with contempt of court and send you into the gallows. <coughs> Sentence you same time, Mr. Ramonabi. <coughs> And then you must ask your colleagues to ask for bail for me. <laughs> so this country comes very, very far. The language of record at the time? It was Africans in the main. English and Africans, but because maybe nine-tenths of the judiciary was African speaking then. Maybe the magistrates, district magistrates, regional magistrates in the main way, African speaking. And when you came in and you come with your English, the magistrate would remark that, oh, it's such a swap and it's magic. You have to argue your case in Afrikaans. Or the magistrate will tell you, the judges will tell you, will tell your client that he was appointed a competent advocate or attorney because this advocate doesn't speak Afrikaans. And most of the law reports were written in Afrikaans then. So was it. So it's interesting today when you listen to the debates. I've been lamenting in, in why they was going to miss out on that interesting uh, and very important history. No, we also were like that. I remember when we started, but we respected our seniors. It started with, uh, after the <coughs> 1976 group, then ethics changed, everything changed. <laughs> Suppose it's progress. But another thing is, it's, it's, it's nice now because uh, the court will remember that we've got a, a judgment from the SCA that is already written in Corsa. Yeah, yeah, by Judge Meyer. yeah. So probably the legal system will then start to develop from there. Very soon we'll have a judgment written in Hevele, in Swati, Shaman Venda, Sisul to and probably all the languages. But that is not true. Let me tell you why. Yes, ma'am. You know Langa? Langa was the first uh, jurist, the late Langa, who wrote about a concept called Ubuntu. Yes, and incorporated yes, into, into our law. Yes. So, with all respect to Chief, future Chief Justice Maya, those concepts were long bended about. I also wrote a judgment. You remember it? H.H. Yes, the WHP. That's it, yeah. Yes. I brought in Ubuntu. Yes. And uh, equality, because the argument then was that uh, the males, Amosadia Saharoka Kula baby, as Okotis, as Mosad, have you ever heard that nonsense? Yes. Yeah, you say, hi. We first find out that Magasha was a Kayazo Kons. Only then Magasam Amogele, whom they know, windowed. She becomes a, a wife. And some purists excoriated me. But the Constitution is clear, it says there's equality. Yes. So I just use the concept of equality to say, what is discriminatory of a woman is also <coughs> discriminatory of the man. So the law is changing. But 
whether there will ever be anything called African law. That's another story. No, just take the law of contract. Take the law of contract. It developed from uh, the time of uh, Cicero. It's not a development as well. I see African law. How do you develop it over the centuries? And the literature also. Because apparently, we are lazy to write. Generally. And there you have it. <laughs> the I was not invited by the BLA conversation, but you know what? It opened up um, Judge Rutter to being a storyteller. Like, we don't know this side of him. Well, of course. We do expect him to keep it all professional in the courthouse, but this is a different side of him that we got to hear. He's actually a storyteller and he's actually a very funny guy. It's just that I don't know what it is when it's now time to be a judge. He suddenly wants to be a prosecutor and a state witness as well. And then it becomes so confusing and so muddled and insisting on a non-commissioned statement being admitted into the record. But I digress. You know, th this was nice to hear. I, I, I will admit I enjoyed hearing these stories although they talk about the injustices towards um you know black people so that for me is a very very tough conversation and just hearing about you can't use that door you could this is not you know you know this is yeah let me not get into it because you know that is Woo, a whole other can of worms but i enjoyed uh, i enjoyed hearing what court was like back then clearly Clearly, I don't think there was much justice then for black people. But that it is that is it from us today. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have made it this final video today, you know you have my heart. Thank you so much. Remember to drop a comment in the comment section down below. If you do not leave a comment, I literally don't know that you watch the video. I love to engage with you all. Whether we agree or don't agree, as long as we keep it nice, copacetic, professional, and sometimes give me that feedback. It's when the feedback goes south where I'm like, whatever. Okay. I love feedback. I'm, I'm, I am open and I love to keep my comment section open. You know, other channels close their comment section. I love to keep my comment section open. You guys have a lot to say. I've learned a lot from the comment section. I actually love the comment section. I love it. I love it. I love it. I am responding in the comment section. Um, I've battled with the idea if I want to hire someone to do it, but I enjoy it because that's what keeps me connected into the ground. And I get my video ideas from right here in the comment section. That is it from me today. Thank you so much. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Have yourself a great weekend. Enjoy your Friday. Let me know if you're doing anything special. That's it from me. Catch you on my next upload.